Delta Sierra, holding short of two radio. Delta Sierra, runway two, clear for takeoff on course. Traction arch return in mile left base. All right, clear for takeoff on two, five two six Delta Sierra. Doesn't matter what plane I'm in, this is always the first part. I just like looking down the runway, you know. Uh Alright, today I'm flying with AJ. You might remember him from previous videos. He's my uh, mechanic, keeps the bird running. Oh, let me get my power set before I get jacking. Okay. Um, we are going to Greenville, North Carolina to a Diamond Service Center, Dillon's, Dillon's Aviation. And they're going to do an annual on the plane. And um, you don't usually bring a spare mechanic to an annual. But our thought process was that um, AJ's not as familiar with diamonds as he is with other brands, so he could talk to the diamond guys, pick their brains, and uh, come up with anything that's diamond specific that he might not be aware of. I am along to uh, help where, where possible and film and cajole is my role in this whole process. Um, and then we're also going to switch out the wingtip lights. We're going to LEDs. Um, I haven't had a ton of problems with them, but they did fail the other day, kept the bird down for a few days, and uh, kind of a mystery as to why they went down. So um, I've been thinking about it anyway, and uh, pulled the trigger and sent uh, aircraft spruce, 1300 bucks. A nice box game. They said thank you. Hey, they did say thank you on the <laughs> receipt. If they would uh, like to contact me about a possible sponsorship, we could put their name and logo right here for a certain amount of time. I'd be more than happy to do that. Oh yeah, we're clear, we've got smooth air. Very nice. And you're flying with me, so guess what you have? A 30 knot headwind. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to have a nine knot tailwind, but not when you fly with Diamond Star Pilot. Uh, one thing I did think about, and I had to research this, so it may not, maybe other people don't know you come to the end of your hundred hours who can fly the plane a hundred hours is only regulated by uh, flight school so I mean you as the owner can fly as much as you want and and it can be rented that's correct that um, that part I didn't know you just you cannot train in it you can't train in it and students can't go solo okay. yep. so yeah, there was. I always knew as owner I could fly, but then it was, and we don't have to use hours that were the hundred hour expired for our new certificate or our new inspection, right? So if you were doing that thing where you can fly at ten hours past the hundred hours, if you're flying it to a place to get inspected, you have to still start your hundred hours back at when it expired, right? So you're already going to be behind the eight ball a little bit, but. Us renting it, for me flying it and renting it, we don't have to count those hours. So whatever the actual hours are, that's where we start our 100 hours. And to learn all this, you can't just go to the FAR. They have an LOI, a letter, was that? Letter of Interpretation. Letter of Interpretation. Um, oh, no, no, you might be right. Interpretation. Something like that. And it's like three pages long. It has 10 different scenarios. All right, let me tend to this. Um, yeah, anyway, this is Paige. This guy, some guy wrote in with 10 different scenarios. And the FAA went through every one of the 10 different scenarios. It tells you how clear the rule is. Um, so we were in a, a little different spot. The 100 hour, actually, we hit that the, at last week. But the annuals do this month. So we had a week of, we're not going to do 100 hour because we're getting ready to do the annual. So no one can fly it other than renters and me. Now we're going down to do the annual. Yep. And, um, that's a whole different set of rules, right? Who can fly or how can you fly a plane when the annual's up? Uh, no, it's really to be quizzing you on this stuff. <laughs> well, the answer is no one. It, it, the, technically, I mean, bottom line is the best rule of thumb is who can fly it into its 100 hour while you're in the air. Once you're down, technically, if you need to take it 
somewhere else for the annual, you have to get uh, a ferry permit. That's correct. That is oh. correct. Once the annual expires, to take it anywhere from where it is, you got to get a ferry permit. All right, today I am flying in, no, not a diamond. You can tell by looking right here, it's not a diamond. This is a Mooney. This is TT. He's uh, ticking me down to get the diamond. Gracious enough to offer me a ride down to uh, Pitt Greenville. It's, uh, it's been quite a saga. Uh, we took it down last Monday, so that's almost two weeks ago. It was supposed to take two days. They found some things they had to order parts for, then they had problems getting parts out of Canada. And here we are two weeks later, and uh, we're going down to get the plane. So. Should be a fairly smooth flight. Um, I had planned to film and stay, but uh, the guys at the shop were not too keen on being on YouTube. And uh, when it took two weeks, I had to come home. So I have a little video I'll kind of splice in here, but other than that, we're just gonna have a smooth flight. And uh, TT's gonna show me how to uh, fly a Mooney. As I said in the video, I'd planned to film this in much more detail, but the mechanics were not interested in being YouTube stars. So. I had to grant their wishes. I had to, had to work around them and not get in their way or, or show them on camera because they just didn't want to do that. So to start the annual, the owner came out. We went over the paperwork. He showed me what they're going to do. He showed me the lists of how everything was going to be inspected and what was going to be inspected. Went through the process of how they notate everything they find wrong and uh, just told me basically what was going to, going to happen. And then I wrote him a check for 2500 bucks. That's the fee for the inspection, assuming there's nothing major wrong. So that's, that's the starting point. So once we got all that paperwork and all that out of the way, about five mechanics swarmed in like a NASCAR pit crew, started taking the plane apart, inspection ports off, and uh, just started looking at everything and inspecting everything per the list they had, they had assembled. And that brings us to where we are now. So you can see they've got the plane pretty well taken apart at this point, cowlings are off, uh, the interior's uh, been disassembled a good bit, so they can see all the parts they need to see. Uh, the right wing is missing. We'll get to that in a minute. The first thing they came across were the clamps on the uh, exhaust pipes. The exhaust manifold connects to the uh, exhaust pipe. Those were leaking, and having exhaust gas leaking under your cowling is, is really not a good thing. That could find its way creeping into the, to the cockpit, so that had to be resolved. We had to replace the whole right side. There were three or four of them on the right side that had to be replaced. Uh, coming around the rest of the engine, everything looked good. Compressions were good. Uh, the oil was fine. Uh, everything there checked out, so that was a good thing. Interior, one of the things they check here, as you can see in the back, there are push rods here that control the elevators, and then there are uh, cables that control the rudder. There has to be a certain tension on those rudder cables. Mine were a little loose, so they had to retension those to tighten them up. But other than that, everything else checked out in, in this area pretty well. So you see they've got the plane jacked up, checked the tires, checked the brakes, went through all that, everything was good there. This podium and book go everywhere the plane goes. The front part of the book is where the lists are, the things they're going to inspect, the different uh, areas from the different chapters of the maintenance manual uh, that they're gonna look at. And then anytime they find something, it's written down in this book. And they use that to compile their parts lists and go over what that needs to be done once they're done with the actual inspection. So it was pretty well organized from that aspect. Moving along, you see they pulled the pitot down, checking the wiring there. Um, something they do on every part they, they take apart, you see that little red bag there, any part screws or, or anything that's associated with that disassembly goes in the bag and is hung right there. That's how they keep up with the parts and the screws to make sure they go with what they have, with where they're supposed to be. Uh, you see we've got the new wingtip LEDs on, those were looking great. And coming around, you can see that uh, there's quite a pile of parts there on the floor, the seats on the wing, uh, they had to disassemble quite a bit of stuff to get to all the things they needed to look at because there's quite a bit going on under the seats. You can see there's wires and tubes and push rods and all, all kinds of things down there. Uh, coming around here, we've got parts. There's the rudder, interior parts. Uh, all that is assembled there so they can put it back together after they've done their inspection. So I learned that anytime I heard a mechanic say, that's not good or that's a problem or worse yet, oh shit, uh, that was going to cost me money. That was the cha-ching, and I heard several of those. Nothing major, but there were a bunch of those. Um, and then we got over to the right wing, and a mechanic exclaimed, oh shit, from under the wing. So at that point, 
we determined the wing had to come off the plane. And that was a bit of a process, not as involved as I thought it was going to be. But you can see right here, those are the spars, and there are only four pins that hold that wing on to the plane. Two in each spar, and they're not bolts, they're just pins. They just slide in there, and there's a spacer that goes between them. The inspection ports underneath are shown there, and that's how they found the problems in the wing. First problem they found were the rollers that guide the push rods for the ailerons. They're metal rollers with a plastic ring around the outside, and a lot of the plastic rings on mine had started cracking. So if those pieces had fallen off, you would have gotten a lot of slop or worse yet, a jam roller, and that might have impacted how the ailerons work. So those had to be pulled out. Then a little further search, we found that the fuel had been leaking around the fuel probe, which is right down at the end here. And uh, it had been a slow leak, but you can see all that black gunk and everything had accumulated there. So we had to address that. So putting all that together, the wing had to come off, and now the tank has to come out of the wing. And you can see there the tank is actually three tanks that are connected together with tubes, and they're almost the entire length of the wing. They're very long, but here is where the fuel probe was leaking, and uh, we tried very hard to fix that leak without removing the fuel probe. Uh, the probe itself cost $3,000, so if they try to remove it and mess up the threads, um, that was going to be a replacement. So we think we got it resolved without actually pulling it out. So there weren't any big ticket items, no big hits on anything major that was wrong. Most of it was, was fairly small, and the individual items themselves weren't that expensive. But there were a fair number of them, and they kept adding up. They were wear-related, age-related. There was really no abuse or, or anything like that, but they all needed to be repaired. And when we got to the end of this whole process, keep in mind I'd already paid $2,500 to start. This is what the bill looked like. We have five pages, every page full, of the issues that were found and resolved. And most of them were in the $100 to $200 range. There were a few little higher. But when you added them all up, they were $8,500. So what we had was an $11,000 annual. Yet stuff needed to be fixed, but that was a bit of a surprise to me. So the takeaway from this, if, you're, if you wanna buy a plane, they are not cheap. And a lot of times you won't have that expensive of an annual, but it can't happen and you have to be able to deal with it. And secondly, if you rent planes, please treat them nice. These things are very expensive to maintain. They're also pretty fragile. So be kind to it. It'll keep it in the air. The owner won't have to pay as much and it'll be available uh, more often for you to, for you to fly. So I hope this was interesting. You get a little bit behind the scenes on what goes on when they tear your plane apart and send you a big bill at the end. I'll see you in the next video.